So today we're gonna look at two of the games that I played last week. You guys are lucky. You're the luckiest. I haven't played a slow chess tournament in six months because I was busy, very busy, okay? Also, I was let out for good behavior. Anyway, so I played a tournament last weekend after changing my mind five times. I won the Al Howlett Award, right? At least you got that joke, that's about it, okay? And I actually decided to play after the tournament started. So in round one, I didn't play, and I started playing in round two. Okay, this game was played in round three, but it was my second game because I didn't play round one. You see how that works? Okay, and I was white against my student, Matthew Larson. When I started teaching Matthew Larson, his rating was 1150. Now his rating is 500. Terrible. No, I'm, I'm half kidding. Okay, so his rating now is 2320. Is that higher than you? That's higher than all of you put together, and it's higher than all of our audience at home put together. You guys at home are terrible, okay? So playing Matthew Larson, I'm white. Now, I have to explain this game to you because you guys don't understand. When this game was being played, a more important game was being played, Michigan, Ohio State. Football, who remembers who won that game? You, who won? Close. Also close, Ohio State, Ohio State, no. Okay, now Ohio State, Michigan was a very close game at halftime, and I watched the first half, like all of you, and then when the second half started, I had to play my game, you understand? So we played really boring, see how boring this is? Are you falling asleep? No. And then in this position, I offered a draw. And then if he takes the draw, I go watch Michigan, Ohio State. <laughs> Did my opponent take the draw? Yeah. He's playing a grandmaster and he's only 2300. My ring's 2600. And he's black and I'm white. So do you think he took the draw? No. No, because he's my student. My students aren't allowed to take draws and he's the only one who listens. And he played Bishop E7, no draw. Now, this was lucky for two reasons. One is, I won the game, that's better than drawing. And second is, I didn't want to see the second half of Michigan-Ohio State, because I was rooting for Michigan, I'm from Michigan, and Ohio State scored like 800 points and Michigan didn't score. So I would have been watching and crying because Michigan got crushed. Instead, I was watching my own game and my opponent was crying. Now you're gonna watch, and since I'm lecturing, you're gonna cry. Okay, so we developed all of our pieces in Castled, just like you do. Right? Right. No. Okay. So my opponent played h6 because his bishop doesn't have a lot of squares to go to if I play some move like knight h4 attacking his bishop. So he played h6 and now his bishop can escape if I attack it. Something Lulu should learn, right? Her bishops are always getting trapped. If we knew who this person was, we could tell her. Right, Lulu? Okay. So h6. Now, I played in the center, because I said so. Knight e5. Now, raise your hand if you know what Barney chess is. And can you close the door? He would say, I take you, you take me, you're the worst player in history. Okay, and then he went here, so we didn't take anything else. However, after bishop to d3, we did more Barney chess. He took and I took. Okay, now, did my opponent take the free pawn on e5? No. Why not? I don't know, because I can't have free. You with the right answer. It's not, it's not free, because then I would take your knight. Okay, so he played a5, and I played queen g4, attacking on the king's side. And he castled. Why would you do that? Because you should castle. Okay, now I want to checkmate my opponent, but we're not playing bug house. We're playing bug house. I could put a knight here, and I could put something here, and then I would checkmate him. But all these pieces aren't really helping me checkmate him. Okay, so I played an attacking move to get more stuff towards his king. What did I do? You at home. Incorrect. Well, they were wrong. What do you want? No, it's too hard for this class. You, incorrect. Incorrect. I, I, right. I, I, 
the correct answer is F4. Rawr, attack. Now my rook, I can do a rook lift. If Jen Shahadi was here, she would approve. And I can push my pawn to F6. Now some of you are like, you're not going to push your pawn to F6. He won't let you. That's what you think. Okay. It actually took me two more moves to get my pawn to F6. Whew. Okay. Now he surprised me. He played rook E8 because he wanted to put something on F8, like a knight or a bishop. So I played F5, and he did what I said he would do. And then I played F6. That's pretty good attack, right? And he played G6. Now it's all blocked up. I need more pieces to get at his king. More. Professional athletes always wanting more. So I played knight f3, get more pieces towards his king. He played queen b6, but I forgot why. Why did he play queen b6? Hey, you're correct at home. That's the first one you ever got right in my lectures. You. Incorrect. You. Hey, you threw your voice pretty good. Good job. Yes, except for one thing that's not a bishop. That's a pawn. Yeah. Also, you were, you were correct. Are you feeling all right? Somebody give him some medicine. OK, so did I give my pawn away with check and lose this pawn too? No. If I did, I would have to change my name to Rick. Hello? You know Rick? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? All right. Man, I played Rick four or five games today, so my lecture is not going to be high quality because there's pieces hanging everywhere. All right, so I played bishop to d4, attacking his queen. Unfortunately, he saw it because he's rated 2300. So he played the obvious move. Yeah, what's the obvious move? Who? Queen b3, losing his queen? What? What are you, Rick? Is your name Rick? No, yeah, you. Um, moving his pawn to C5. But then he might win my bishop. I don't want to lose my bishop. So that's what happened. Okay. Now, the reason I played bishop d4 was sort of sneaky. In this position, my bishop's not really getting it as king because I have all these pawns in the way. However, if I could put my bishop on this diagonal, and then I could play like queen h4 or queen h3. Then my bishop could get him. So I play bishop d4, and then I put my bishop on that diagonal. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to come get him. That's the plan. Sometimes plans don't work. OK, he played a4. And I have a very famous saying, which you all know. If it's free, then it's for me. So I took it. Most of you would play rook takes a4. And if you did, I would send you back to the 1 o'clock class, because that's where you belong. OK, because then I would play queen takes rook, and you'd say, oh, no. Queens move sideways. OK, so instead he did a fork, but little did he realize I've seen a lot of forks in my life. Matt Larson, on the other hand, weighs about 115, hasn't seen a lot of forks. OK, you know what I'm saying? You hear me talking? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of forks. He played queen a6. Now, I saw the original Star Wars movie when it was in the theater when none of you were born for 30 years yet. 1978 and or 77, depending on your point of view. Okay, And when I saw that movie, I learned a lot about chess. You know what I learned? Use the forks. Okay, So he's forking my two pawns using the forks. And I played. Rook d1 defending my pawn. Did he take it anyway? Yeah. No. No, he took the other one. OK, now we're going to vote. You can vote for trading queens, not trading queens, or Pat Buchanan. Who votes white should, white should trade queens? Raise your hand. No. Who votes white should not trade queens? What's Pat Buchanan? What's Pat What? It's somebody you vote for by accident. All right, so most of you voted for not trading queens, and Pat Buchanan was second, which is correct, because you should not trade queens when you're checkmating your opponent. Then you won't checkmate them. What if you don't need your queen? What if you what? What if you don't want a queen? 
Well, then you go to the one o'clock class. Then, then you belong. Okay, so I played e4 for obvious reasons. Number one, I'm not trading queens. And number two, as I told you three minutes ago, but you forgot because you were eating pie. Why were you eating pie? Because it was 3.14 minutes ago. I wanted to play bishop to this diagonal and take this pawn, but this pawn was in the way. So I got him out of the way. Now he made the losing move. Why is it good to play the losing move? Who knows why? Why is it good to play the losing move? That's right, he was playing me, so that's good. If you play the losing move, not so good, unless you're playing me, that's okay. And I wanted to play bishop here and take his pawn, and he was like, sure. He attacked my bishop and forced it to go there. Now I'm gonna show you something really, now I'm gonna show you something really tricky. Remember, no talking. Okay, let's say he doesn't make any move at all. How about here, yuck. That doesn't do anything. Now if I play bishop here with that idea I was telling you about, okay, now he has a move that's so tricky I can't even show you. Because you'll just start crying and then everybody will get upset and then people at home will start crying and their TVs will stop working. They'll just be terrible. He has the move knight takes e5 attacking my queen. Some of you are confused because, because why can't just take the free knight? But you forgot about Star Wars. Use the forks. Use the forks. Do it. Queen D4 check. Forking the king and the knight. No. Okay. So actually, I wasn't threatening to play bishop to D2, but he helped me. He played D4. No, but then what do your bishop take the queen? No. No, because that made no sense what you said. We were analyzing bishop to D2. So the bishop would not take the queen, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so he played d4, and now he can't do any of that because he can't take his own pawn. Now I'm ready to checkmate him. Checkmate's good. What vitamin does it have? C. Vitamin C for checkmate. Okay, orange, you glad you got that? Yeah, yeah three of you got that. Okay, now the reason 3.14 didn't get it is because oranges aren't pies, right? Well, maybe. Okay, my opponent was greedy, so he played queen c2 to capture the center pawn. And also, his rook's gonna capture this pawn. He's using the forks. Now, what's better, a center pawn or a side pawn? All right, let's go back to the planet Earth. What's the right answer? The center. So I save my center pawn by playing bishop f4. He could still take my center pawn, but that would be risky. Okay, so instead, he played rook takes a2. Now, my bishop's on the proper diagonal. So I played rook d2, getting rid of his queen, trading the rooks, and then queen h4. I'm cold. Okay, now there's no defense to his h6 pawn. Hooray! Yes, there is. Yeah, Such a, he raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. Raise your hand. Okay, you. Your bishop. His bishop's defending it, but I got two guys on him. He's only got one guy defending it. Who gets the prize for raising their hand? You. Uh, The king can go to g7? No. That's the one o'clock class. Because my pawn could take him. You meant h7, right? That's what you meant. Now, I'm going to show you something so complicated, you need an advanced degree in hyperbolic topology to understand it. After king h7, watch this trick I have. It's not really a trick. It's just a simple trick. I can take his pawn. What would he do? Take my bishop, then I put him in check. Okay, boom. And boom goes the dynamite. Now his king moves, I take with unstoppable checkmate. So he didn't like that. I liked it. He can just say, I played the 
No talking unless you raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. All right. So he didn't play king h7. He could also play g5. Then I take, you take, I take, and here comes our good friend, queen h7 mate. Isn't he a good friend? No. He's my friend. He's not my opponent's friend. Okay. He could also play h5. Then I would play g4. Then if he takes it, our good friend queen h7 mate is coming. Isn't he a good friend? Okay. So he's in a lot of trouble. He played queen e2, a very sneaky move. Very sneaky. However, I saw the movie Mr. Deeds, so I never underestimate the sneaky. Why did you spit your drink out at home? You never even saw that movie. No, you saw it. Okay, so, man, I'm quoting Adam Sandler. I should retire. Okay, now let's play the obvious way, and then we'll see why it doesn't work. Bishop takes pawn, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop. And now, it looks like white has unstoppable me, but black played the very sneaky queen e2 earlier. Now he can stop mate. How does he stop it? You. Uh, Correct. Taking the what? Taking the knight? Taking the knight? Then, then mate. Uh, also, I could take his queen. But you were 50% right. Arjun, who might have the right answer. Who? Queen e3. Check. Uh, now I can't mate him because the computer won't let me. Because I'm in check. So I have to trade queens which I don't want to do. So before I played bishop takes pawn, I played an intermezzo, a zwischenzug, as you would say. I played rook e1. Now, I don't think his queen's going to e3. So he took, and I took, and here comes the checkmate. Cold. So he could have given up, because I'm going to checkmate him, but my students never give up. So he sacrificed his knight, and I said, thank you. I'm very polite. Then he attacked my rook, and I put my knight, I took his bishop. Now if he plays queen takes rook mate, it's not mate. And if he plays king takes bishop, then it is mate. So he took with the rook. Now some of you, most of you, especially you at home, you guys at home got to get better. Okay. After queen h6, with unstoppable mate, right? It is unstoppable mate, except I'm the one getting mated. Oh. Queen takes rook mate. No, I, don't. I get mated before he does. So is that what I did? Yeah. Now, I played knight f3, defending my rook, nice and safe. Also, if he had a free move, he could play queen d2, and stop my queen from going to h6. Now he can't play queen d2 because my knight defends it. So he can't stop queen h6. My rook's defended. I have another way to mate too. If you don't like this way, I got this way. Knight g5, queen h7 mate. So now that he's down a knight and I'm going to checkmate him, what did he do? Resigned. He resigned, wow. right? Wow. And, then, and then I looked at my phone and, and Michigan lost by like 30 points. <laughs> Sad, right? Then what happened the following week? Michigan State beat Iowa like at the end of the game. Come on. Aren't you guys paying attention to the Big Ten Championship? No. All right. Now, as I was explaining, being a professional player is fun. You win all your games. Then in the last round, when you're playing for a prize, you lose. Then you get no prize. So I'm playing in the last round, and I'm playing a national master named Nick Carlo. His rating is 2250. Is that higher than you? Yeah. That's higher than you by about 2150. Okay. And am I higher than him or lower? Higher, lower. Well, one of you was right. Higher. Yeah, 2600 is still higher than 2250 until the new math comes into effect. So I need to win and I'll win some money. If I don't win, I won't win anything. Now, we played a very funny game. I thought it was funny. My opponent didn't think it was so funny. The reason it was funny is. After 20 moves, nothing was traded. Okay? So it was really boring. 
He wanted to play boring and hope that it would be a draw because then I wouldn't win. Okay? So nothing happened. Nothing happened. It's like the Blair Witch Project. Nothing happens. Okay. All right. Now something happened. I played bishop h6 because I want to play f4. Rawr! And he played knight to f1. So when I play f4 and he takes it, his knight's defending e3, so I can't play e3. So I prepared f4 where I played g5, and I won on the king side, and he won on the queen side. That was very exciting. It's exciting because we didn't trade anything, and then all of a sudden, everybody took everything. It got all crazy. The mood all changed, right? I prepared for this game with Eminem, right? I did have, I had plain and peanut. No. Okay. So he played c4, and as you know, c4 is, well, explosive is the right word, but your joke's slightly less funny. Okay, we could say, if you like the move, that move is the bomb. We could say that. Okay, so yeah, we get another joke in there. That's good. All right, so I played f4, and he played c5, sort of a mirror image. Have we traded anything yet? No. No, all the pieces are on the board. I have a king side attack, and he has a queen side attack. For example, if it was his move, he would win a piece right away. What would he do if it was his move? If it was white's move, white can win a free piece. If you're taking notes, winning a free piece is good. I'm, I'm talking to you, Rick. You with the possibly right answer, but I doubt it. His queen could take this pawn? No. Very risky. It does fork the queen and the bishop. Well, you might lose your queen. It is a fork, but it's the wrong fork. So what you do is you eat from the outside in, or is it the inside out at a dinner party? That way you're using the right fork. Hey, you would know that. Which way? Outside, outside. outside in, right? Yeah? Yeah, that's the right fork. Arjun, you are right over there? You asking your dad for the answer? Arjun, correct. Yeah. C6, forking my bishop and knight. Do I want to lose my bishop or knight? No. No. So I played bishop to d5. Then he attacked my bishop, but I saw it. Have we traded a lot of pieces so far? Okay, now during this game I was thinking something, something my opponent wasn't thinking, okay? Uh, and, I, and it's rated G, so I can tell you. But the only thing I could tell you I was thinking during the game that was rated G. So, during the game, I was thinking of Karpov, Kasparov, 24th game of their match. Karpov was up 12 to 11. So if Karpov wins or draws, he's the world champion. If Kasparov wins, it's 12-12, and he was the champion, he retains his title. This was their third or fourth match. So you might think, go for checkmate. If you checkmate, you win. Kasparov didn't do that. Kasparov didn't do anything. He moved around in a circle and hypnotized his opponent. He wanted the game to go a million moves. The longer the game goes, the more likely his opponent will make a mistake at some point. If you play 100 moves, you might make some mistakes. If you play four moves, you could only make four mistakes. And most of you would. Okay, so... I thought if the game went on and on and on and on, he would make a mistake eventually, just like Karpov did. Kasparov won that game and retained his title. Now, we've had no trades. We're moving around and around and around, trying to get an advantage. And finally, when we started capturing things, then he made mistakes because he was getting low on time. So he took something. I took back. And he played rook c1, getting the open file. And I didn't like my king here, because he might check me. So I moved it to the corner where it's safe. My opponent took, and I took, and he made a move that's so scary that even if you're not afraid of zombies, you'll be afraid of this move. He played queen c6. Notice the queen is attacking the knight, which is not protected, and it's attacking the rook that's not protected. Well, that knight's protected a lot. I'm not worried about that. So he's using the forks, because Star Wars is coming out soon. 
right? How did I save my knight and my rook? Luckily, there's like five answers. You, what's the right answer? Move knight to f6. Right, now both my knights can go to f6, but you meant the correct one, because the incorrect one would lose my rook. Right, if you move this one, then he just takes my rook. But if I move the correct one, now my rook is defending the other rook. And my knight's defending my knight. And my knight's defending my pawn. Wasn't that lucky? Okay, so I could also play knight c7, but that would be passive. Knight f6 is because I'm going to checkmate him. All right, now he attacked on the queen side. That was very scary. No, it wasn't scary. Okay, now he broke a very important rule, but I don't blame him. Because he's playing me, so it's tough. I'm going to push all my pawns on the king's side, Wes Berger style. Rawr. And he doesn't want me to do that, so he played g4, blocking the king's side. Okay, and since you're kids, you don't know the en passant rule. We won't even talk about that. Okay, now I played queen e6 with a devilish trap, which he missed. It's good that he missed it. Okay, although. Computer says I'm winning anyway, because look at his bishop. Boo. Terrible. OK, so now I have a threat, but he, he didn't see the threat, so that didn't work out. He played knight g2. Now, who knows what a skewer is? OK, a skewer is when you attack a piece and a smaller piece behind it. OK, so if I played rook c8, that would be a skewer, attacking the queen and the rook. The problem with that skewer is his rook's defended, so he just moves his queen away. However, if his rook was off the board, now rook c8 would be really good, right? Rook c8 wins everything. So I want his rook away from his other rook. How do I make this rook move away from this rook? Attack the other rook. Partial credit. I want this rook to move so I can play rook c8 and take his rook. You with the right answer. Um, moving knight to b4. How do I know that you know the right answer? And sacrifice. Right, knight to b4. Right. Okay, so he's like, thanks for the free knight. And now I can attack his queen either way. One way is right and one way is wrong. The problem with this move is he can stay on my other rook. And now if I take his rook, he takes my rook. So that doesn't work. I have to play the rook on a to c8. And now I'm going to take his rook, and everybody's happy. When I say everybody, I mean me. Now, it turns out Nick Carlo, my opponent, was supposed to move to Nebraska for medical school. Okay? And I said, where are you going to move to in Nebraska? That, that's true, by the way. And he said, crazy town. And I'm like, crazy town? And he's like, I know crazy town. That's where my people are. Right? Nick Carlo lives in Crazy Town. Right? So, yeah, it's a real place, Crazy Town. Okay? And also, Danny Wrench lives there. He's the head of chess.com. Okay, so when you live in Crazy Town, you make some crazy moves, right? You guys don't live in Crazy Town, so you would move your queen, right? You live in Crazy Town, you give away your queen. So he played pawn takes pawn, and I took his queen. Ask me why he gave his queen away. You're not even asking me, you're going to tell me. Why? Probably because... Such a simple answer, such a long explanation. Probably What's the simple answer? Lives in crazy town. Lives in crazy town. Yeah. All right, so he'd rather lose a queen for a rook than lose a whole rook. I'm like, all right. Now I attacked his rook, and he saw it. And I attacked his other rook. This pawn is attacked so many times, I can't even count that high. So if he saves his rook, I'm going to, it's at least three. I'm going to take this pawn a million different ways. Now, when I played this way, I was analyzing pawn takes pawn, knight takes rook, attacking his rook. Rook takes pawn, attacking my queen, defended by the bishop. Queen f7, threatening to destroy his world. Rook f6, and finally I saw queen a2. The idea is, if he takes my bishop, I take his rook. If he takes my rook, I take his rook. 
if he takes my bishop this way, that's why I played queen a2. Bam. Shit. Yeah, well, I'll check me soon. Okay, so that was what I was expecting, but he didn't do that. He played f5. That's a better move. I took his rook, he took, and now the f file's not open. I can't checkmate his king. So I moved my queen, he took my bishop, and I took his pawn. Now let's see who's good at counting. What's the material situation? I have a queen for a bishop, knight, and a pawn. Everything else is the same. What's worth more, a queen or a bishop, knight, and a pawn? What's worth more? Yes? Close. I'll give you one more guess. Queen. Queen. Okay. Now, if you did your math yesterday, I assume you'll have your math homework. I'll collect it at the end of class. Queen is worth nine, right? If you don't agree with that and you speak German, it's still nine. Doesn't matter. And a bishop, knight, and a pawn are worth seven. If you did some kind of crazy math. So a queen's worth more than a bishop, knight, and pawn. Also, I'm going to play knight d3, attacking f2, and I'm going to try to queen this pawn. And when I say I'm going to try to queen it, I did queen it. So I must have worked out. Okay, he played rook e6, not a good move, but has a very good threat. Who's the smartestest? What is white threatening to do? Rook e6 has a really mean threat. If you don't see it, you got to go to the 1 o'clock class. What? What is white threatening to do? Arjun. Bishop e5 forks my queen and king. Then I would lose and I'd cry because then no prize money. So I played knight to d3, which does two things at once. It protects your bishop e5 and it threatens your f2. Also does a third thing. It lets my pawn promote. My knight was in front of my pawn. Now it's not. He stopped queen f2, and I was like, oh boy, I can promote my pawn. But then I remembered that I'm a grandmaster. And I was like, ah, I'm a grandmaster. I almost forgot that for a second. Okay, grandmasters don't let their opponents do stuff. My opponent wants to play bishop e5 check and win my queen. That means my knight can't move anywhere. If my knight moves, I'll play bishop e5 check and win my queen. Right? So I was like, why is my king in the corner on the same color as his bishop? So I played king g8. Now, if I wasn't a grandmaster, I would just queen my pawn and win quicker. But as a grandmaster, I have to stop all tricks. You know why I stop all tricks, Arjun? Come on, I told this joke for four years. Come on. Ben Simon. Tricks are for kids. Okay, so I play king g8. Now he can never even check me. Okay, so now I'm trying to queen my b pawn successfully, I might add. I did pretty good, didn't I? Now he played for one last trick. He checked me, but I saw I was in check. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, and I move my king. Now, if he plays bishop e5 check, I'll take it with my knight. I'm serious. But if my knight was off the board, then he would play bishop e5 check and win, even though he's down a queen, because I would be in checkmate soon. So how does he get rid of my knight? Easy. Yeah. Rook d3 took my knight. Now most of you would take the rook, and then you get checkmated. Then I would lose. Then he gets my prize money. So did I take the rook and get checkmated? No. No, I defended the e5 square, so he can't do that. And I did something really, 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 really good. It's the third best thing you could do in chess. The best thing is checkmate. The second best thing is to take a queen. This is the third best. You. Yeah, I made a queen. And before that happened, I looked on the side of the board to see there were extra queens. And there were. Now, I have two extra queens, and I stopped checkmate with my queen. 
and I'm threatening to take this and this. So with the two extra queens and forced checkmate, he did what any chess master would do. He resigned. And then what did I do? Get the prize money. The best answer today. I might not play good chess, but I'm going to get in the prize money. Yeah, I get that prize money. So I didn't play chess for six months, but I still didn't lose any games. I still got my prize money. Okay, then he went home crying. <laughs>